Hello, my name is Suneku and we're doing another video. This video is going to be the big hammer switch skills video. So I'll be going over all the different switch skills that hammer can use. Um gonna be explaining which ones I prefer, uh giving details about which each one can do. And um, we're also going to talk about the switch scrolls that you unlock in Sunbreak, which allows you to use two set of skills at the same time on the field. Now, depending on when you watch this video, you may not have all of the switch skills just yet. If you're at Sunbreak and you just got to Sunbreak, um, you'll be missing two of the last switch skills. But I'll describe them anyways, just so that we, for the sake of um, just having it on record once you get it, then you can refer back to this video and check out what they do. Alright, so let's get started. So, as usual, I have my pets over here on wait. You can set that with your uh, little shortcut menu here. And we're going to have the training options for the training dummy. Going to keep the head low. And the wire bug gauge will keep it at infinite for now, unless I find I need to use it. But just for the sake of always having wire bugs and being able to use the skills at will. Alright, so to get started, we're going to go over to our item box and go to manage switch skills. And then change switch skill. And right now you'll see there's two scrolls, a red swap scroll and a blue swap scroll. I'll be explaining those in more detail near the end of the video, but for now we're just going to go over all of the different switch skills that we have. So we can choose either one. So the first one we have is you can choose either side smash or water strike. So Side Smash is the one that you start off with uh, at the very beginning of the game. When you have your weapon out, you press A and you'll do this side swing attack. And this attack can be followed up with either your standard combo with X doing the overhead smash and the upswing, or it can be comboed into the Big Bang combo where you keep pressing the A button. And of course, you can also side smash and go right into uh, charging your hammer, do your charge attack. So that's the basics of the side smash. The other skill that we have is called the water strike, which as it is described is an attack that allows you to absorb a monster's hit. We'll go over that in just a bit. Just going to show the basic mechanics of that. Similar to the side smash, when you have your weapon out, you press A to activate it. This one will give you an overhead attack. And one key difference between this and the side strike is that when you do the water attack, you will not be able to go into the golf swing combo or the standard X combo. So no matter how much I press X, it won't allow me to combo into it. So the only thing you can do with this is do the attack and go into the Big Bang combo. Or of course you can do the attack and then go straight into a charge, do the attack and roll, stuff like that. You just cannot go into the standard X combo. So you may think, what's the benefit of that, losing the ability to go into another combo? And that lies in the description that I read about it initially. Um, so it says, an attack that allows you to absorb a monster's hit. Perform this attack right as you're about to be hit to negate the damage. When successful, it's possible to follow up with an upswing hammer attack. 
So to demonstrate this, we are going to change our training options and we're going to change our um, dummies actions to shooting a projectile. This is one of the neat features of the training room. So now this dummy is going to be shooting out uh, water balls. And they are projectiles you can be hit by. So as the description says, it can negate attacks. So if we time it just right, we'll be able to stop the attack from happening. You'll get this like blue wave effect, like rippling water, and you won't take any damage. So this is very useful, a use a very useful tool for hammers, especially with how close quarters they have to be with monsters. Sometimes you can't dodge away, so you'll have to defend yourself. And if you can time it right, you can get this strike on it. Now, of course, since I've been practicing it a lot, it seems like it's really easy to get each time, but it does take some time to get used to the timing, especially depending on the monster's attack. And as well as it describes, we're going to change this really quick. Stomp. As it said, you can follow up with an upswing. So as soon as your counter lands, you can press the X button and do a very strong upswing attack. Or you could press the A button as well. And combo into Big Bang if you wanted to. It really depends on the situation. So not only can you stop the attack from happening, you can do an effective counterattack. You can also go into your charge right after this. So that's another option for you. So yeah, very versatile and um, a very big move for Hammer in order to protect yourself and to keep attacking the monster with counterattacks. Um, I'm going to change this to one more thing. So now there's an option for the monster to shoot out gas or to do a roar. Pretty sure this will work with gas. Don't really know the timing of the gas. Okay. So let's say Volvidon is about to do its stinky attack. Oops, and I timed it wrong. But in essence, you should be able to counter this attack. Hang on. So you'll counter the stinky attack, and even though I still have the effect from it, you won't take the effect of the gas. Um, this also works with Kezu's like electric shock body attack. So you'll be able to counter the damage and not take the effect of it. And then for the very last thing, not sure if weak or strong roar matters. you'll also be able to counter Roars. Which is... Which is essential to a lot of my setups when attacking a monster. Knowing when they're gonna Roar, countering it, and then following up with an attack. The Water Strike takes a lot of practice to get used to the counters, and it also depends on the monster that you're fighting. But it is a very useful ability to get used to and to master in order to make your hunts go well. 
Um, you'll do less dodging, so use less stamina. You'll take less damage from attacks and such like that. So this is the only section where I will say that um, I say you should absolutely use Water Strike over Side Smash. I don't believe there's any reason to use Side Smash at all. Because Water Strike can essentially do everything it can, plus so much more that's more beneficial for the weapon. So all I say, keep Water Strike. Alright, so the next set of skills that you can change is between Charge Switch Strength and charge switch courage. So this affects your weapon when your hammer, as you can see by your sharpness, it's the yellow right now. This only affects your weapon when it is in the blue or purple hammer. I'll interchangeably say blue or purple. So when in strength mode, the charges essentially mirror the charges that you have on the normal yellow hammer. Level 1 is just a normal swing with a side swing. Level 2 is an upswing. And level 3 is either your spinny attack if you're moving while you let go. Or level 3 is the charge big bane, which goes up and goes down. So that's always, or not always, essentially going to be the same. Uh, the purple charge for strength, the same normal side swing with like a stronger power swing. An upswing, it's called charge brutal upswing. And then the level 3 is a little different when holding a direction. You'll do a step smash, that's essentially the same as the yellow level 3, except you're able to move forward and get some distance. And then the standing still level 3 is the charge brutal big bang. So that's all the things for the strength version of the hammer. And now we will switch to the ever so complex courage version of the hammer. <laughs> so this contrasts a lot from the yellow version of the hammer that the strength version was mirroring. This one, as you know, has three levels of charge and depending on how long you charge it, you'll get different attack. Courage Hammer has three levels of charge, but they work a little bit differently. So the idea of the Courage Hammer is that you're continuously using charge attacks um, in a sequence rather than charging up and getting ready for one attack. So what I mean by this is when you charge up this, you'll see it takes a very long time to get to that next level of charge. That's actually getting you from charge level 1 straight to charge level 3. So with the first attack, we'll do these all with charge level 1. You can charge and let go. And you press the charge button immediately. And then you'll be at another swing, which is the upswing. And then you press it again. And then you'll do that step smash. So it's kind of doing everything in a sequence. I'll do it more smoothly now. So the first one, and the second one, and then the third one. For the sake of comparing, let me do this. I'm going to switch this to strength. And my blue swap scroll has um, courage. I'll swap between them. So with strength, you swing once and then you just go back to level one after every one and start over from the beginning. With courage, you swing and then you continue on to the next level. 
and you keep continue on to the next level for that. You'll get used to it as you play it, but you're in this mode you're just continuously pressing the ZR to charge and to let go, charge and let go. Whereas compared to strength, you can charge and you can let go, but once you start charging you're back to square one. So hopefully that makes sense. Now to go into more details about the Courage mode. So as I said before, if you hold it long enough, it goes to a level 3 charge. And even though at this first part it's going to a level 3 charge, we can still go into the next charge. And as you can see, it pretty much immediately goes to a level 3 charge for the second step and instantly level 3 for the third step. Um, the benefit of holding the charge longer on the first one, if we hit this foot over here, we'll do 91 damage. If we hold it to level 3, we get 91 damage plus essentially almost half that damage, so we get additional hits to it. So you also get multiple hits on the second one, and you'll always get multiple hits on the third one. And this damage does add up quite a bit. Um, as well, if you are in the middle of a combo, so if you do an overhead smash, you'll do the first one. If you do two overhead smashes, you'll go into level 2. And then if you do, I think if you do the golf swing, you can charge and go straight into level 3. Another thing you can do with Courage is after you do your first charge, you can do a swing in between and then go to level 2. There's no swing in between uh, level 2 and level 3, but there is for the first one. The level 1, all up swing, then level 2, and level 3. So there's lots of flexibility in changing up your combos or extending your combos in a way. And an additional thing that this can do, I don't believe strength can do. is if you're holding your charge and you do have to dodge. Actually, I have to remember how to do this. It might be only for level two though. Or maybe you can't do that. I'm trying to remember because I believe there is a way to keep holding your charge if you do a quick roll and then come back into it i might be mistaking something i'll have to remember that but even that aside you do have a lot of flexibility and options uh, to go with that um, another thing i wanted to add along with having water strike i'm gonna get the projectiles out again or the attack out again. So if you remember how I said that with Water Strike, you can follow up with an upswing. Well, in Courage, you can also follow that upswing up by holding down your charge and you're instantly at the level 3 version of your charge. As well, if you do the Water Strike counter and then just go into charge, you'll immediately be at the level 2 of your charge. So again, with Water Strike, that counter adds to you, gives you additional options, and especially so, especially so with Courage Hammer.
So I believe that's all I have to say about Courage Hammer. Maybe I'm thinking of another... I'm remembering another skill with Courage. Um, I'll talk about the other thing later if it does come up. So that's all for Courage Hammer. In terms of which one you would pick, uh, there isn't a clear winner even though Courage does seem like a really strong option. Strength is still really good. You can put out um, a lot of damage and bigger hits. So you can think of Strength Mode more along the lines of a great sword, where you get less hits but more damage when you do land those hits. And then Courage is more along the lines of something like, I'll just say Dual Blades. Definitely not as fast as Dual Blades. But you get faster attacks and more hits in with a little bit less damage for each hit. Uh, generally, in terms of which one people choose, I guess we could talk about meta a little bit. Um, people use the Strength Hammer for weapons that are just focused on raw attack, so no element. And then people use Courage Hammer for weapons more that have elemental damage, since they'll be getting more hits and more elemental damage on the enemy. Um, with that being said, I still use Courage with um, with raw damage weapons. Sometimes I use Strength with elemental weapon damage. Sometimes it just depends on the monster that I'm fighting. So I think both are interchangeable. It just depends on how you want to play. Um, Courage is a lot of fun for me, but I do like doing Strength as well. So I guess you can leave it up to a personal preference which one you want to choose. So our third skill is going to be the either the spinning bludgeon or the spinning bludgeon charge, which is one of the first new skills you get once you enter Sunbreak. Let me stop the training dummy for a second. So this spinning bludgeon refers to when you have your yellow hammer and you're at level 3 and you're moving a direction doing your spinning attack. Oops, I am on the wrong scroll. Apologize. Switch. As I was saying, this is when you're moving a direction on your yellow hammer and you start doing the spin attack. As I explained in, I believe, the very basic hammer uh, lesson, there's different timings when you can let go of your spinning charge, which also coincide with your levels of charge, like 1, 2, and 3. And if you leave it out at the end, and then you press A, you can go into your Big Bang level 3 and then the Big Bang finisher, so that's an option. So that's the original attack that you are accustomed to because you started off with it in the game. Spinning Bludgeon Charge Mode is a little bit different. It also does has things to do with the three levels of charge. And this only happens when you're charged at level 3 and you're moving a direction in the Yellow Hammer. So in this attack, when you let go of it and you're holding a direction, you'll do three long spins and then swing. You cannot follow this up with the Big Bang attack, though this is uh, pretty much the end of it. I don't believe you can go into an X move either. Nope, you cannot. So I guess again at first offset, this doesn't seem like a very much different or helpful move compared to the other spinning bludgeon. Uh, one main difference that we can see right now is the distance you travel is a lot further, at least for the first two swings, compared to the other one. So that can help you close in distance with um, a monster. But it does have a secret function that they don't 
not sure if they explain or not, but I didn't read it. Um, it does have a secret function with it, and that is after you release it, if you start pressing ZR to charge again, you'll see your weapon start flashing again. And so it will start flashing, and if you notice it, instead of glowing red, orange, and yellow, it glows purple, blue, and light blue. And that's the same colors as the charge when you switch to your purple hammer. So, with that, if we do this attack and only do it so it charges once, <clears throat> and we press the A button, we will switch to our purple hammer. And it looks like we're at level 3 right now, that's just because I'm using Courage Hammer, but we are at the first level of charge. I'm going to switch that really quick so you can see the differences. This will be Strength. This will be Courage. Okay. And we'll go back to Yellow Hammer here. So we'll do the attack, we'll just do one level of charge, press A, and now we're at level 1 in our blue or purple hammer. It went up to level 3. If we go back and do two levels of charge before you press A, we're going to be at level 2. Well, level 2 for a little while. I think I have focus on my build so my charges go faster. And then, of course, if we hold it for the whole time, get all the swings in, and press A, we'll be immediately at level 3 in the blue hammer. So in theory with this, along with when you switch to the yellow hammer from blue, you're automatically at level 3. You can kind of continuously do this attack. By pressing A, switching to blue, charging again, pressing A, getting to yellow. And you can just continue to do this endless cycle of charges between yellow and blue. And it combos with other things too, but uh, we won't talk about that. But that's the what I call the secret function. Not really a secret, but the more technical function of uh, this switch skill, the spinning bludgeon, the charge form. So essentially every time you want to use it, you want to make sure as soon as you let go of the charge, you want to start holding it again, just so that you're charging up. And you can either press A to go back to blue, or you don't even have to use the blue, you can just keep switching back, just pressing A. It looks kind of silly, um, and monsters won't usually give you this much time to do all this, but it's just to show you like the options that you have. Um, don't quote me on this, but I also believe the Switch may have some invincibility frames when you're switching. And you have like the step back as well, so you can give yourself some space, so that's also helpful too. So in terms of which you like between these two, um, I would also say this is per personal preference. I do lean more towards the Spinning Bludgeon Charge because I like how it combos into uh, the blue combo. And I don't usually use the normal spin on the Yellow Hammer for the normal Spinning Bludgeon. So I lean this one, but I do know people prefer this one and there is a benefit with one of the other skills we're going to talk about in terms of this one. So hopefully I remember and we'll come back to that as well. But yeah, those are the number three switch skills. The bludgeon charge and the regular spinning bludgeon. Okay, so now number four and five, we're getting into our silkbind skills. Our first Silkbind skill is the one that you start off with default. 
And this is the Silk Bind Spinning Bludgeon. So to do your Silk Bind skill, you'll hold down the ZL button and then you'll press X. And then you'll do a jumpy spinny attack over the monster, doing multiple hits every time and then a finishing hit. Um, it's similar to sliding down a hill in this game or in Monster Hunter Worlds where you let go of your charge and you do a spin. Except you can start this from anywhere. Because, and this costs, um, this costs one wire bug to use. It's fairly quick to restore. Now, because hammer is a charging weapon, if you hold down ZL and press X, and then right after hold down ZR, your normal charge button, you'll hold this position as long as you want until you want to let go and as you can see the hammer charged up to level three the longer i held it and of course this gives you more damage on your landing that's a benefit to it a downside to this move is that you are not invulnerable to anything So, whether I try to hold it down, or I let go, if I get hit by a monster, my attack stops. I lose my wire bug and you take damage. So it doesn't have any sort of protection. The benefit to it is that you can use it against um, flying monsters if they're staying in the air for a long period of time. It'll be easier for you to get to them rather than staying grounded with all your other skills. The next wirebook skill that we have that replaces this is called Dash Breaker. You get it part way through, um, part way through Rise, going through the hub class, and this skill is the same. You press ZL and X, and then when you do. You do a forward dash kind of charge swing type of thing. Similar to the spinning uh, bludgeon, you can hold your charge with this by doing the same, holding in ZR, and then letting go for a stronger attack. Oops, I'll demonstrate an attack here. Normally 188. Approximately, and then charge at level 3, 257. Now in terms of doing this when a monster is attacking, I forgot to hold it down. Uh, it's similar to the spinning bludgeon, where if you're just holding it down, waiting to let go, you'll get hit. But if you do have the attack commenced, you'll power armor uh, through the attack and continue on. So this can go through monsters' attacks. Keep in mind, you will still take damage, and if stun is building up on you and you are one hit from stun, that last hit will stun you. So keep that in mind, you can't tank through everything. Um, it also does not tank you through status effects, I believe, but you can get through roars. And that one also costs one wire bug to use. Um, the same amount of uh, cooldown time, I believe, for the wire bug to come back. Oh. There's one more thing to this. If you use the skill and then hold ZR right after, you'll immediately go into your level 3 charge. So this can help you get close to a monster and be instantly ready to do a strong charge attack on them. So you can also keep that in mind.
So the last switch skill that we have on number four is a switch skill called Keeping Sway. Which is a switch skill that you get later on in Sunbreak. I don't remember exactly when, but at the start you don't have it. So same input as the other two, ZL and X, and it is essentially a dash. So it doesn't do any damage. It's fairly quick. Uh, what you can do with it, just sim similar like the dash breaker, I'm not remembering the moves anymore. Um, after you do it, you go. You can go immediately into your charge. You won't be at level 3 if you do it, just from there you'll start at level 1. However, if you hold it down, whatever charge you're at, if you're holding down Z, R, then you press Z on X, you'll keep that charge wherever you dash. Of course, you can't dash infinitely like I am, we just have infinite wire bugs. But you'll hold on to that charge so you can get close to the monster and then do a follow-up attack. So the benefits of this move go a step further than the dash breaker move, where instead of tanking through hits, you just go through them. So you can dodge through projectiles, you can avoid attacks, and you can dodge roars as well. So if you don't have time to set up like a counter with water strike, and you're in the middle of a charge, you can just dash through. So again, another very useful move for hammers, just to get them out of trouble, um, just get them out of danger, or to get them close enough for an opportunity to attack after a monster's attack. And it has a fast wire bug recovery. So among these three um, skills, personally, I just ended up always using Keeping Sway rather than Dash Breaker or a Silkbind Spinning Bludgeon. Um, I found that the rest of the hammer's attacks, moves, and kit are plenty enough for me. So that just having this dodging attack that can move quickly into my other skills is more than enough for me um, to use. I don't need an extra attack skill, um, especially ones that um, displace you as much as these ones. Because another benefit of keeping Sway is... Oops, that's Impact Crater. Another benefit of keeping Sway is that you can really choose any direction you want to dash. So it's like an any direction thing, and it's quick and short. Where the other two, they're a little more high commitment in which direction that you choose to go. So personally, I feel like that's the best for me. Um, that being said, the spinning, silk buying spinning bludgeon, still good for flying monsters, as I said. Dash breaker is good if you have like a sort of wire bug set up where you want to build up that uh, bar so that you can mount a monster quicker. The dash breaker will definitely be more helpful than keeping sway since it doesn't do any damage as well as it still does armor through attacks, which can be useful. So, again, this is all personal preference, only the Water Strike is the one that I'm saying you absolutely have to use it. Um, but yes, I do prefer Keeping Sway, and I essentially just have Keeping Sway on all of my uh, builds for Hammer. Alright, so the last set... And we're going to turn the training dummy off. 
the last set of switch skills um, have to do with your ZL plus A silk bind attack. And there's two different ones. There's Impact Crater and Impact Burst. So Impact Crater is the switch skill that you start off with that uh, the game gives you. Essentially, when you have your weapon out, you hold Z, L, and A. You'll go way up into the air and do this final slam. It's essentially one of your biggest finisher moves as a hammer. So, And because it takes so much time and it takes two wire bugs, you want to make sure that it hits and you don't get hit. So usually you only want to use this when the monster is knocked down, um, when they're stunned, when they're paralyzed. You, you'll use it as a wake up when the monster is asleep because the final hit does a massive amount of damage and it multiplies by two. Or if you're really experienced with fighting a monster and you know where they're going to land, like say Rathalos, or sorry, Raytheon, Raytheon does a backflip and sometimes right after the backflip they just land right where they're going to be. So what I've been doing is, as soon as I dodge the backflip, I set myself up to be in the right spot. And then I use this right as they land. So if you can get a timing like that on the monster, and you know where exactly where they're going to be, that's another great opportunity to use it. But do remember, it does cost you two wire bugs. And generally, you're only going to have two wire bugs rather than all three. So you want to use this uh, sparingly. Um, this skill also does coincide with our charge levels again. So at charge level 1 it doesn't do anything new. At charge level 2... You get a second hit on your final smash. Which will hit the monster and then do kind of like a ground area of effect damage. So if the monster's head is too high, then it won't hit that second hit. Um, but that will double, essentially double your damage on the last hit, and then charge at level 3. You get even more damage on the last hit, and that's also doubled as well with a secondary hit. So, of course, making the most out of your damage, you'll generally want to always be at level 3 when you do this move. And as we've seen before, if you really need to quickly get to level 3, if you're in purple hammer and you're charging, you can just press A to switch to yellow and you're automatically at level 3. So that will quickly get you there. Um, same thing with the spinning bludgeon charge move, where if you let go and then you hold your charge to get to level 3, you use that to get close to the monster, you switch to blue, you're at level 3 and then you can get the maximum damage on it. So yeah, you definitely want to maximize how much damage you do on that one, trying to get as low the level 3 charge as much as possible before you use it. And as well as taking two wire bugs, I do believe it's pretty slow. To recharge as well so yeah just be careful um generally you'll want to try to find that third wire bug in the area so that you have an extra one and then our last skill is called impact burst um, again you get this later on in sunbreak and i don't know exactly when but it replaces the impact crater move and this one only costs one wire bug Um, let me see. I need to switch this up really quick. Actually, no, I do not. Yeah, this is still strength. Okay. So this is the same input as um, the impact crater. You'll hold Z, L, and A. And then when you press this, you'll put your hammer into the ground, spin it around. And then you'll have a blue glow around your arm. 
So what this does is whenever you use any charge attack, you'll get additional damage on the hit. And it'll be a fraction of the damage that you've done before. Miss all those hits. Um, I believe it lasts for 30 seconds. I'll double check the description. Let me try to get all these hits in. Yeah, so every attack that coincides with a charge attack, you'll do additional hits. Um, this is the thing that I said was beneficial with... Um, to switch this. Um, it's also beneficial with the spinning bludgeon charge. You get additional hits after those. But there is benefit with the original spinning bludgeon as well. Just getting those additional hits. I'll just rev it up again. So every swing... You'll get those additional hits with it. So that can also be useful. Um, one thing that's a little neat for this, as long as you get the beginning of the spin off and get the glowy effect around your arm, if you get hit in the middle of that animation, you'll still get the effect. So it doesn't have to be like completely, you don't have to be completely safe in order to get that completed. As well, the spinning effect does do damage to monsters. So you can use it right on them. And if you can or cannot tell by the particle effects, this also does stun damage. So you can use this on the monster's head to build up stun damage that goes along with your other attacks. Now as we saw with Strength Hammer, it does additional hits. You get some additional hits. But this also applies to Urge Hammer, which we already know gets additional hits from its level 3 variant. So, like, on top of the additional hits, you're getting even more additional hits. So this is a very good um, skill to use coincide with Courage Hammer. It just keeps adding numbers and numbers and numbers um, on top of that. Of course the damage is never as big as your initial hit, but getting additional damage is always beneficial. Um, this also works with uh, Impact Crater. We get additional hits here. They're not as significant, but they're, they're still there. So a very useful or very fun skill to have. All right, so you may be asking which one would I prefer between the impact crater and the impact burst because they both have a lot of good benefits to um, what you can do as a hammer. The crater giving you a very strong finishing move and the burst giving all of your other attacks additional hits and a lot more damage. And this is where I'll be a little funny and say, why not both? Which will lead into our next topic, which talks about these um, swap scrolls that you get once you start Sunbreak. So these swap skills, at a very basic level, are essentially giving you two sets of skills that you can use when you're out on a hunt. So you don't have to go back to the tent, switch your switch skills, and come back, stuff like that. So you set up all the skills you want on the red swap skill, scroll, I should say. Let's pick this, maybe we'll pick dash breaker and impact burst. And then we can set a few different skills on the blue swap scroll. And then as I was demonstrating to show different skills, 
anytime I swap scrolls, I have a new set of skills. So you can have two completely different sets of skills if you wanted to. This one I have Courage Hammer, maybe I want to switch to Strength Hammer, so I'll just switch skills. Um, and I guess just to reiterate the tutorial of the swap scrolls. Um, in order to swap them, you'll hold down the ZL button and you'll press X and A at the same time. Your character will do this little move, and you'll see at the bottom middle of the screen the scroll changes color. So it's the red one and the blue one. Whoops, didn't mean to zip. Uh, this costs no wire bugs, so you can do it anytime you want, as much as you want. Um, in addition, after, right after you do the swap, if you press the B button in any direction, you'll do a flip and you'll immediately have your weapon out. You can also do the scroll swap with your weapon out. Um, but there is no way to quick sheath your weapon with this. You'll just have to press the sheath button or the item button. So this is very useful for a lot of different weapons. In terms of the hammer, uh, and as far as my play style, I don't switch my skills too much. Um, for the most part, depending on what hammer I'm using, I'll either switch, I'll either choose courage or strength for both of the scrolls. And then I'll keep everything else the same. As I said, I like keeping sway. I usually use the Spinning Bludgeon Charge. And then the only thing that I have different is Impact Burst on one scroll and Impact Crater on another scroll. So that way when I start a hunt, I can set myself up with the Impact Burst and swap out, and then I'm ready for whenever I need to use my finisher with the Impact Crater. And then all the other skills are the same, just in case I am on the red scroll and I need to make sure I get into the right position before I use my impact burst. Um, I'll stay on the red scroll. All the other skills are the same so I don't get mixed up. Switching back to blue and I'm ready for my finisher attack. Um, again, this is just personal preference from, from me. Some people do like to switch it up quite a bit. And depending on the weapon, you may switch up a lot more than you have here. Uh, for But for me, I like to keep it simple and essentially just switch the last one. If I'm using a strength hammer, I'll have them both on strength. Alright, so I think that about covers everything I wanted to talk about in regards to the switch skills and swapping the scrolls. So hopefully that was informational about what all the different skills do. I'll definitely put timestamps on when I'm talking about which ones, though it's a little tricky when I'm swapping between certain ones, so I'll do my best to do that. So hopefully that's informational. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much all of the skills that the hammer gets. You'll get the last few eventually when you're going through Master Rank. And I do believe that they are very beneficial and useful to the hammer in general. So hopefully you can take from that, figure out which skills you like the most, and experiment with them as well to figure out which ones best suit you. And I believe that's it. So uh, thank you for watching this longer than usual video. I don't make videos this long, but I hope you enjoy it and I hope you learned a lot. Of course, if you have any questions about anything, just feel free to let me know, and I'll do my best to answer that. But until next time, take care, and bye-bye.